it's a playground and I'm here to play Twisting your fears in a brand new way The crew could never leave me in the past Now it's my turn, I've caught them at last I made a deal with shadows unseen Now you're lost in this haunted dream I whisper promises in disguise Behind this mask the darkness lies And now your time is running I'm a piece I'll take Now my true instincts are awake I'll show you how your face can rust Smiling as dreams all turn to dust Playing mind games from within I lift you up just to pull you back in And now your time is running out Sentiment fuels the grand design To my kingdom you're now resigned And now your time is running Hello everybody, um, welcome to the extra game for this, well, you know, one more game. This is, uh, so we are playing the game Lucid, uh, Sea of Dreams. In this game, this is taking place outside of the nightmares. So, the villain cards do not work here. Like, villain 13s do not work here. Like, this is... This is separate, but in within the story, but to get in, in it together. Um, we have the new cards, they're called the hope cards. So, um, I'm sure you guys have seen them. We have, I mean, they are the if you donate $20, those are the pack, those are the cards that you get. There's Vibe That Tune, which makes the next roll a 20 with a cheer squad activation or like crit success depending on like which game that we play with a crit success and cheer squad it on top of that and um tell us which song it is like nika's got all the um instrumental versions for our intro songs queued up we'll play the instrumental version of that song and then that 
your action, the player that wants that 20, make the action match the vibe. So if it is Starborn Melody, it's just like very celestial, very just like out for answers. If it is like the path, then it is very much like combat, like we are great, we are the best fighters. If it's begin again, it's just very much like um exploration. We are wonderful at this. And if for some reason you wanted to have it to be long nightmare, then that's how you give the villains a 20. But um that's up to you. Daylight Crush is very much like the lemon bars or something like that. You give them a can of fucking Daylight Crush. It's just a can of sunshine, however that tastes. Um, but it does heal quite a bit, and it negates a current, like, effect of Nightmare. So if your character is feeling hopeless, if your character is bleeding, if your character, um, is under the influence of drugs, it will negate that. Um, fan fiction is change a little thing around. Like, you can give somebody full health, um, and they can keep fighting, but at the end of the scene, that goes away. So, if they take extra damage, like, say say somebody's at 10 HP, and, uh, say somebody's at, like, 4 HP, sorry, and you, re you heal them up to 12, and then they take 10 damage, when they go back to 4, they'll be at negative 6. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Shot to the dark, which is just, you gotta say it like the intro line, the shot to the heart from, um, Bon Jovi. You have to say it like that, or else the card doesn't make sense. Um, it will kill one minion, or eliminate one minion, but it is, to be clear, it is not a, um, remove them from the scene politely situation. It is done. That is Akana, or whoever plays that card, literally shooting through dreams and killing that character. Um, it also does five damage if the villains are on, like, if a villain is on screen and you want to play that, you hit him for five. Officer's Aura is, there is a Mysticians, give you a plus five to your roll for any magical roll, Luminaries, plus five for any science roll, Steam Guard, plus five whenever you're um, making a roll to protect someone or something, and Wayweavers, plus five on any navigation or searching rolls. Um, these cards do not go away at the end of this month, but they will probably go away at the end of the year. So... But also, if you donate the $20, uh, we gift, pa uh, gift a pack of two of them to all players, like, in the community. And there we go. Am I missing anything? All right. All right, everybody. Um... We are going to get to introducing the players. Kind of. So we have Soki, played by Not Forgiven. Oh, that's me. And we have Osiria, played by Shy. Hello. But you can't see Osiria yet. Osiria's kind of here. Here, Jason. So, Soki, during this time of dreams that everybody has been, like, having just a real hard time dealing with, how have, how have you been doing? I think Soki's been doing relatively all right, comparatively. I think after the, um... The oh god, the the gibbet dream. That was kind of like his wake up, and so he made his way towards uh, like one of his like safe spaces would be like Tomb Squad Tower, and like locked himself in, and the vibes have been off. So he's been trying to get to the to the root of it. Absolutely. Um. So. Oh, let me. 
real quick to everybody. We are playing a game, Lucid Sea of Dreams. They have, we are rolling 10 ciders. All they need is a success. The more successes that they get, the better the roll is. Um, and the better the effect. So like one success, you get your the answer that you're looking for, or to a degree. But you need multiple success successes if you want um, like to get like big things. Um, I will tell them the challenge level. Basic challenge level in this game is three. All they need to do, do is get above a three. It's a pretty chill game. It's not like aimed to like crush the players. Sorry, I just needed. I wanted to get that out of the way for everybody. Can you? Roll me. Roll me an intuition check. Um, this challenge is just three. Okay. I don't have 3D dice on my. Oh, I'm a fool. Oh, curses. Sorry. Still waking up. I roll a diff additional one because if you roll a ten, uh, they explode. You get a roll again. All right, so, yeah, that is three successes. I know you guys didn't see the first two successes, but there were three in total. Soki, while you're in your tower, your Tomb Squad tower, through your, in, like, with your intuition, you are looking down at... the whole of the echo that the um that the crew knows you see there are multiple just like pulsating nightmares um that are beginning to spread out throughout the world one of them is happening at the silver thimble one of them is happening at dendroid one of them is happening in yoke and the biggest, and like, possibly scariest as a word, like, um, and this one is happening right in the, um, the wields, like right in the forest next door. And that one is unsettling. You hear the wolf howling. Yeah. But you've got three successes, so let me give you a little bit more. You also... Spending time in here, you guys were made aware... One second, I gotta clear my throat. You guys were made aware that this wave of nightmares was coming. You guys were preparing for it. That's what you went to the concert for. Like, to warn the world that a threat was on the way. You feel like this threat should have been over by now. And like, you, you being you, can feel something is incredibly unstable. Like, the network of magic all throughout the world, and you can see it like veins running through, um, underneath the echo. Like, some places are massively built up with an immense amounts of magic, and other places have barely a trickle. In fact, Tier Loa is glowing. Like, it is bright, and it's like incandescent with magic. And, and so is the Celestial Sea. And, and you can see the egg underneath the yolk just... It, it looks like it's vibrating with magic. And this is kind of like all of a sudden, not like it's been gradually building. It's just kind of uh... the wave that hit the nightmare wave is like stacking, you know, like a like a multiplier. Like this magic to you should have settled in across. Like that's how the um, Sentinels explained it. It's just like you send us magic, we'll send it back, like, and we'll keep everything balanced. 
things are not balanced. Like, the world is doubly magical than it was cu a couple of months ago. Even more than double. So I think Soki was just planning on waiting it out, waiting out the nightmares in his tower, and just kind of just like uh, fending off what did come his way. But since it's been so long and uh, it's it's not stopping, I think it's like at this point he's just like, well, <laughs> maybe I could do something about it. Let's go go on an adventure and see what's what. So, when you go to step outside of your tower, you will be stepping into dreams. Like, you will not, you know that you will not be crossing into the real world. What are, what are the three things that Soki has that he can manifest in his dream form. Do we want to keep to like his items that he normally has, or is this just kind of anything? Um, it can be anything for sure. Um, if it's one of the items that you normally had, it would, um, would work but yeah like you tell me whatever like well what does dream soki carry on him i think he just always has that lantern with him that's just kind of kind of a given uh, something very powerful that he just feels like he's in charge of protecting probably got his uh, one of his weapons with him whether it's the lightsaber or the or fate uh, just in case he does have to actually fight something and then uh, I'm not I'm not sure what the last thing would be um Unless it is just the 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 D twenty that he's uh, also you know protecting, keeping around oh, with him, turn it into a diorama of the echo. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's fun. As you step out of the like, what is um, what is Soki's mindset as he steps into the dream? I almost feel like. So he's like kind of done it before when he's used Eternity Gate, and it's almost like that same type of uh, instead of looking into like the future for answers and being able to manipulate things here and there as he uh, is going through there, it's instead preparing for the dream in much the same way, where it's just like. I am the the constant. I need to be uh, stay in control and kind of like the same mindset that he has in Ioni where if he wants it bad enough he can make it real almost because of dream as you step out immediately you see a kick 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 he looks down at you he looks at your staff and he looks at the die and he's just like you've picked up some fascinating little tools haven't you 
I, I guess it has been quite some time since I've seen you, Mr. Harbinger. That is the name that I'm supposed to remember. He, oh. Harvey, like, pops down. And he just, like, starts walking next to you. It's like, where are we off to? Well. Well, I've got some investigating to do. And I guess from what I see, we're just going to go right over, right next door to the forest. That's close. And it might be the biggest problem, so might as well start there. You, uh, That's... coming with? It's just like, do you know how to deal with nightmares? I have a theory. Untested, of course, but <laughs> uh, you know, we'll figure it out along the way. Very, like, you do not... <sighs> I don't know if last time you saw him, if he, I don't think last time you saw him, he was wearing a lock stitch uniform, but you do notice he is wearing a lock stitch uniform now. I don't think he was. Was it just kind of just like, look at it and look at him as he's bopping around, just. When'd you join the crew? She's like, oh. She's like, I want to fit in. It's just like, it's not fair that you, um, for only one of you to be on the, there. Only one been... of me? One of us. It's just like, you've, like, sorry, Ooh, I, I messed up when I said that. It's just like, it's just like, it's the cool thing for us all to join the crew, right? I mean, I think it's pretty cool. It's just like, well... Let's go deal with the big bad wolf. It's like... You do know if you die in a dream, you die in real life, right? Yeah, that's... That's ah, overrated. And, you know, probably not proven. He's like... He just starts, like, doing his little three-legged walk ahead of you. Um, roll influence to change this whole area. I was gonna say, just like, uh, actually, the door's over here. Oh, <laughs> well then. Four, Four successes, absolutely. And it's just like a almost ethereal door, which is like a doorknob that's just way too big. So he just like has to use two hands to like twist it and push it open. The harbinger shrinks down and just gets like right on your sits on your head for the ride. He's like pigeon size now. As you make your way through the dream forest around you, you are hit. Like, four successes mean you don't have to roll a resist, just for the record. Okay. But, like, you are hit with a wave of nightmare energy. What does it feel like, Osiria? It 
guess is it's like wolf specific like nightmare energy yeah, or absolutely so yeah i guess it's just that like constant feeling of just being watched like being followed by something like that feeling that it's there's definitely something stalking you but you can't see it no matter how like how diligently you look around for it the harp like a harbinger like shudders like doing a little like quaking on top of Soki's head I think when Soki feels it uh, the lantern like flares up and like gives him like a little bit of like an aura for a bit until he like relaxes into the feeling Absolutely. The, the Harbinger looks at the lantern and out of his eye reaches a hand and it pokes the lantern a little bit. And you do see some of the Harbinger's energy go into the lantern as well. And it begins lighting bright green. Zach, careful with that. Har Harbinger just like jumps a little bit and gets about as big as Soki, and he's just like, Where did you find that? Uh, Soki's just gonna kind of laugh a little as he like recalls, and he's just like, Well, it came to me in a dream. And when I woke up, it was there. The Harbinger, like, looks around. He's just like, You all are getting far too big for your britches. He definitely huffs a little bit about it. Have you... captured any spirits in that? I... I've always thought of them more as, like, ghosts. I haven't necessarily tried to... Um... Get a spirit in there. Had a few uh, uh, friends. Uh, move on to the next step of life, and then uh, just kind of got pulled in instead of going to the train where I think that they're supposed to go here. Ah, yes. The Echo's afterlife is quite strange. After Seems lives. Mostly efficient. Afterworlds? A train car for every level of beyond. Is it, are we being watched oh probably and I, I hope so I sense one of my old friends one of the ones I took to space yeah must be referencing Osiria uh, found herself a, a little curse that it seems to have uh, become a bigger curse since the last time we talked. As you continue through the woods, you approach a cabin. 
and the cabin is constantly shifting and it looks at the same time like a cozy little grandmotherly house but also like a pile of wood that has been blown apart. And the malice, the dark nightmare energy appears to be coming from there. Is there growling, Osiria? Like, you don't have to be growling, but do we hear growling? I don't think so. Not yet. You don't have to be sitting on the couch. That's just where I put you. I think as we like approach, I'm just going to look up to, to Harvey and just be like, well, first stop. <laughs> uh, if uh, she's not here now, I'm sure she will be soon. The Harbinger, when you look up at him, is wearing a flannel shirt. And he pulls out, like, a woodcutter's axe. I read uh -huh. this in a story. Well, I'll keep that story in mind. You might need it. It's like, do you think she's eating a grandmother? I, I, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Maybe we can ask her. Osiria, how would the big bad wolf show up? Is it like a sudden thing? Is it like, are you in the corner and slowly unravel yourself? Uh, I think, if anything, they definitely hear her before they see her. Because before she like physically reveals herself she is going to ask why are you here and i think as she's saying that she kind of just steps out of nothing like she was camouflaged by basically the dream itself Actually, I'm uh, looking for you, I think. <laughs> like, as I uh, spot her, it's just it's like, I imagine just radiating that nightmare energy that I'm looking for, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, roll of resistance. Oh, I don't know why I typed that. Uh, four. We're looking for a four or higher for this one. Thirteen. <laughs> Adventure. Adventure. What's that look like? <laughs> Harbage is just like, oh, who's a good girl? <laughs> Pretty much like, what am I oh, resisting? Just idea. like, just like <laughs> the fear, right? Is that what I'm supposed to be resisting? Just like the fear of yeah, the yeah, big you, bad wolf? The, your fear, like you're resisting um, the big bad wolf's ability to just be terrifying. That like the sense of dread, the absolute like, you know, you are prey. This is your predator fear. I think uh, Soki's just going to uh, come up here and, and plop down on the couch. And kind of the some of the 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 green fire around him turned silver as the the dye in his hand starts glowing 
Uh, and he's just like, ah. You know, I wasn't sure if you were actually going to be able to talk. There's, uh, there's more Vosario left than I thought. The Harbinger just waves. <laughs> <laughs> this is an intervention. <laughs> Do you know that you're caught in a dream? See, I think she already had to take like a minute's pause because she was not ready for either of these two to react so nonchalantly. <laughs> but I think when the Harbinger says that, she kind of like thinks about it for a moment. Kind of just says, I am... what? Uh, elaborate. <laughs> I want to try to um, influence and just be like, you know, if this was the real world and not dreamland, would I be able to do this? And uh, I just want to like, I want to, I want to make something, but I don't know. I think I just want to, like, make a garden up here. Because it's Osiria. And... Um... Can I just do that? Can I just... Yeah, go for it. Just immediately change it, just be like, and yeah, now we're here! Uh, yeah, that would be influence. Um, and... Oh, sorry, if you think the big bad wolf would try to resist it, you roll me a resistance. Um, Soki's gonna roll influence first, and you have to roll um, that number or higher of his successes. So, I oh my god, <laughs> he, he gets to roll te uh, two more times, so he's gonna have at least. Um, uh, this was the challenge of. Yeah. So, what's your resistance, Osiria? Uh, four. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, he has five successes. So, yeah, um, roll me four resist and try, and hopefully you get an exploding die. Exploding die is what happens when you get a 10 in this game. I know Soki said it before, but just so everybody knows, when you get a 10, you re-roll that 10, and you count that as a success, and then you're going to try another one. Two successes. All right, absolutely. Um, let me see here. Got a, do do do. I've got a good one. The harbinger starts buzzing around it like a bee. You see his like wings <laughs> going like really fast. And he going. He's going from like one flower to another. You're really good at this. I, I got a lot of practice in Ioni. Harbinger just keeps eyeballing Osiris flowers. <laughs> Keeping their distance. See... I do like that Soki won that so aggressively because I feel like the wolf tried to resist, but they did a lot of appealing to Osiria right there. So I think she might have a little bit more of her own control in this particular moment. Yeah, Soki's just going to kind of be walking around like back to the the big bad wolf and just like going around like looking at the different flowers and stuff that he's uh made up he's like, and then he's gonna just kind of like look over his shoulder at a area and just be like so who's who's actually in charge in there 
Are you both in there? Is it like split control? Am I talking to the... Who am I talking to right now? That's a good... That's a good question, actually. Do we think that success, it's enough for Osira to, like, have a moment to speak as herself? Or... I think that's up to you. Yeah, absolutely. Completely up to you. Like... If if you think that, and honestly, he like Soki won so aggressively that like it can be just like you pop out a little bit. So, yeah, I think at least for now we have Osiria back. <laughs> to which you I guess like take answer your full form. Maybe, actually. Yeah, I think that feels good just to, like, have a visual, like, representation of who is currently in control. It's just like... So... like you were so, trying to say something i'm just trying to think of how i want to go about this because i think she's definitely a little confused about how soki managed to do what she's essentially been trying to do this entire arc <laughs> Just kind of like looking at her surroundings probably looks at him like what how did you soki what did you do god damn it uh, so... uh i really just want to say well i thought glowy and it made it happen <laughs> uh but <laughs> the the real answer i think would be uh just like well I'm not fully sure what I did, uh, but uh, it's like, I've always, you know, been able to feel the magic. Yeah, <laughs> it's really strong right now, especially with you. So I just kind of took some of that, like, weaved it into the dream and turned it into uh, this. <laughs> well Harbinger lands in a flower waves at um actual Osiria. Yeah, see Osiria would wave back, no problem. Like right, yes. <laughs> I cannot guarantee how long this will hold, but Whatever you did, I, I would hope we can figure it out before that thing reclaims control of my of my mind and my form. Ah, uh, well, that just that's just your your job entirely. I told you this thing was there forever ago. This this curse that you had, remember? Remember, it used to not be so strong, but, uh, you know, time changes and suddenly getting uh, blasted with, you know, magic that probably resonates more with it. I guess it makes sense why it's got so much control now. Suppose you were right on that front. But, you know, on the bright side, you're still there, which means there's still hope. That is true. It might take some learning, but I bet you could get control of it yourself.
I... I thought I had reclaimed control, but... It seems there is certainly more work to be done. Oh, there is always more work. The Harbinger nods along with it. She's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like, that half doesn't belong in this one. Like, that one's stuck in a dream. It's nice to see you awake, though. Well, partially. Soki, I mean, Har the Harbinger looks over at Soki. She's like, I think the rest of your crew might be dreaming, too. Well, except for that one. He's fine. Yeah, I mean... If... What I saw everywhere else is similar to this one, I... Imagine... That... Those other pockets of nightmare energy are probably dreams as well. What say you, Osiria? You feel like going on an adventure? If... If you will have my assistance... Certainly. Okay. Ah, don't worry if uh, your other half gets the better of you. Just, uh, might need them. Depending on how bad the dreams are. I will... Do my best to avoid it where I can, but if the need arises, I I will put my trust in you to protect yourself. So he's just gonna smile and just be like, "All right, well then, shall we?" The harbinger looks over and says, "Protect me." Yes. Yeah, of and course. protect the Harbinger. That's right. I'm very fragile. Stokey and Osiria, there are three points of, like, nasty nightmares going on. This is not villains, don't worry. This is not me targeting you in this. This is three other nightmares that we know are happening. There was one happening in Yoke. There's one happening in the Silver Thimble. And there was one happening in Dendroid. I think I'm just gonna look to Osiria. I'm gonna have my my die out and just kinda like point to a few sides. This is like, alright, so. Uh, where do you want to go first? Here, here, or here? It's Yoke, the Thimble, and Dendroid, right? Yep. I believe it would be best to start at the Thimble and... Plus, most likely that there's more crew there, I'd imagine. Yes, that is... I believe helping them first would be... the ideal way to go about things. Alright. Yeah, absolutely. Um, go ahead and roll me an influence um, for travel and a resistance to not go feral. Oh. Travel is just a three. <laughs> it's like all we need is a three, so... It's also an adventure 13. So. It is also an adventure 13. <laughs> we're, gonna just... we're gonna piss off the villains if you keep rolling 13s. I'm not... <laughs> because there's been so many games without 13. Yes. Yeah. That's There's fair. the resistance on my end. Yo, roll those tens again. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I oh, was yeah, I your resistance was going to be five, so... So but... do I just add three more, because two exploding yeah. and then... Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, two more. Two more. Two more d20s. So okay. you have you have three successes right now. How many more are you gonna get? Okay, just three successes. Um, but that's still a good amount of successes. Rolling three twenty side is getting a thirteen isn't even like is that even a high number that is not even a number that comes up a lot. Yeah. Right. I can say it. Four D tens and just happened to get the thirteen. Well, you know what I think it is with those three successes? Oh, by all means, let me know. I think it's specifically because Soki rolled that 13. Like, oh, Syria's kind of able to just, like, anchor herself to the consistent of Soki and his just radiant adventure energy. Like, she's just focusing on that vibe in the air, and it's like, what's keeping her from losing herself again? So I think what it looks like for the adventure side is... He'll twist the die so that the the thimble side is up, and he's like, "All right, now watch closely." And he's gonna like put magic into it, and then it's gonna like zoom in as they're like pulled into the side, and then they're there. Do love it. I right. and um here you all like you go back into the into the dream. And you see the figures of Zachna and Clem, both of them like standing back to back, fighting off like nightmarish figures. Like you see like black, inky figures attacking them. And they are just like this is in between everything. So there's no like real solid ground around you. Like, Everything is very ethereal. And uh, one second, let me get let me get tokens for us. Everything could just be a goose, but it's not gonna be. <laughs> Here we are, because this is what got them. You see these two pincered by um inky oyster looking monsters attacking them from multiple angles and they are doing their best. They are valiantly fighting at um these creatures off. But as is, you know they're about to lose. Zachna's sword Zagna has a flaming sword and he is just going ham and Clem back to back with him using his um honey hammer like effortlessly making the um the honey change shape tangling up these creatures spiking them down but it's too much for them this is how they died But all around you, the sense of adventure, you could wake them up. You could stop their death. They, like, blew it all up, right? Their, like, they, final moments, right? Their final moments is they, um, they guarded the explosives long enough for the expl I mean, for Isaac to set the explosion um, explosives off, as they were being attacked by the um, strange like gremlin things. Well, I think Soki would at least try. And how about you, Osiria? Uh. Here's a fun question. Can can Osiria have items to manifest in this moment? Absolutely, yeah. Was... What what are the three items that Osiria would manifest? Uh I think one 
is her silver earring because like that's just a generally important item to her one i think is she doesn't physically have one normally but like But, like, just a, like, shield of sorts, kind of, almost like a spiritual, like, sort of one-handed shield. Just, you know, represent her kind of, like, protector sort of attitude. Yeah, absolutely. And I've been stuck on a third one, to be entirely honest. Because I've been thinking about this for a bit. I mean, it could be a lockstitch communicator if you wanted it to be. Ooh, I like that. It's like, absolutely. Um, so they, it, this feels very dreamlike. Like, if you guys just try to walk towards them, it feels you guys ever have those dreams where you just cannot make it down the, down the end to the end of a hallway oh yeah yeah moving but no progress yeah exactly that like, it's gonna feel like your feet are stuck in the mud or like you just you're running as fast as you can to save them but you just can't get to them and you see the bombs counting down this is why it takes influence to change things. I think uh, for I guess the idea that I have is instead of like trying to make it there and like fully changed what happened. I think Soki just wants to like put up uh, like a bubble around them to protect them from the explosion as opposed to trying to like stop what actually happened. The Harbinger being upside down and wearing the antennas is adorable. <laughs> First, sh all right. Um, and what is? Go ahead and um make the influence roll. This is going to be a trickier one. I do think this is a um. We need a five to succeed. Okay. Yeah. Exploring okay. Die. Never mind. Oh. Actually, if I remember how help works, can I give him one more if I'm, like, also trying to, like, shield these guys from the monsters rather than... Oh, absolutely. Just one more die? Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. You roll that, though. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Rough. Close. Close. Almost at it. <laughs> yeah. Two successes. Um, we're looking to make the bubble go up, right? You want to bubble these two. Okay, okay. So. The explosion happens in front of, like, you guys didn't run in. 
like you just protected these two. The bubble goes up, the shield protects them from the explosion. The whole, but we didn't manage, we did not save the silver thimble with this. Like above the ground still shakes. Everything collapses and you guys see the roof crush some of these nightmares underneath the pile of rocks. And for a moment, it looks like everything is buried. But then climbing out of the wreckage, Zach never, like, like, dust, like, lifts his wings and you see just the rubble fall off. And he reaches down and grabs Clem, like, forearm to forearm and lifts him up. And you see those two pull themselves from the wreckage as they begin to go look for and to start helping people out around the silver thimble. I think as they like these two will like walk past you two um I do not think they can see you but the air of we did this is vivid um can you roll me a resist at seven Osiria this is not you trying to resist the big bad wolf this is a big bad wolf trying to resist Lockstitch oh Okay. So you don't want to succeed. This. Well, or you do. I don't know. Uh, one success. So it does mean it work. Uh, it does resist it. But um, how would you fight against the big bad? Um, I think this is one damage to your lucid, Osiria. All right. For everybody uh, not aware, we have five lucid, and if we lose all lucid, then we are no longer dreaming. Which, I think that definitely makes sense. It's like, Osiria can still make a push here, but like, there is still resistance from the wolf. Wolf token too big. <laughs> right. It extends quite a bit past the uh, the actual picture. Yeah, you guys only see like that end of it. Wolf Wolf got a whole body. Like Har um Harvey looks around and he's just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Change. Isn't that your name once upon a time? I've had a couple. I'm using a new one lately. Oh, do tell. Never. No. Maybe. Oh, I don't think you need to roll for the next part of it. You arrive at Peanuts, like desk whoops I copied the bomb I thought I copied all of us you get to Peter's desk and it's about to explode oh no oh, no. oh shit <laughs> this scene suddenly took a whole different turn <laughs> Tina is sitting at his desk, um, looking bedraggled. 
like so tired. Um, looks like he hasn't slept in months. It's just like he's repeatedly swatting at his ear. Um, he's not paying any attention to either one of you two. You see laid out all across all of his stuff is just he's got the threads on the board it's just like cash can't be the bad guy no serial can't be the big bad wolf we can't it's just like if if we all fall apart we're just gonna go the wrong way again and then you just see him like start to like close his eyes and then like snap open trying to fix everything and you see like a thing that says Lockstitch Agency instead of Lockstitch Academy on his desk. She's like you also see resignation papers for um because he is resigning. He refuses to be part of this agency. He looks up, and you see him, like, looking towards you, Soki, as, like, he can almost see you. And then you hear, like, tinnitus, like, so screechingly loud, and he, like, covers his ears up. And, like, you see a trickle of red fluid pouring out of one of his ears. He does not seem to notice. Oh. Is this, uh, like, the same almost ethereal uh, vision like the last one. Yeah, it's all very ethereal until you change it to make it not. I think he's just gonna look to a Siri and say, even after all this time, he still didn't believe. Still had, still had faith in you, my friend looking at Osiria. Admittedly, that is somewhat reassuring. It is unfortunate that things played out the way they did in this nightmare, but it's good to know that the crew, some of the crew, still held faith in me. Now's your chance to change it. If you wanted to change this uh, specific nightmare. Maybe. Give him a keep, or give him a reason, something to fight for. Help him out. Just a little bit, you know, a little push, a little nudge in the right direction. Hmm. Oh, Syria, as the big bad wolf, I think you can hear the boogeyman's like effect going through this room like you can even inside from inside peanut's ear you can hear the song something about secrets but you more than that you can hear the thing that's behind that song like you can hear the anxiety the absolute just well the boogeyman's scratch Hmm. Can I try something like real weird here to Oh, absolutely. I love real weird. I think what Osiris plan is here cuz it's all like the sound of the song and like the sound of like the thing that Peanut has going on that's getting to him is like the issue, right? Yeah, the the song is actually what killed Peanut. Like, it feels like it was Iskra that did it, but Iskra was just there when it happened. The song killed Peanut. Okay. So, I think what Osiris' plan is is 
to hell with a certain, like, resonance to it that isn't intimidating, it's not threatening. It's more like when we were on the moon fighting those... fighting the nightmares at the end of the last arc. When she kind of had that, like, victorious howl moment. Like her and Midnight both did, like... She's kind of gonna do that kind of thing. To hopefully, like, offset the energy that that's giving off to more of a positive one instead. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what role do you think? I, I, it's probably influence. That sounds right. So say it's either influence to try to change her or resist on like Peanut's behalf to try to cancel it out, kind of thing. Yeah, I think influence is probably the play here. All right. Soki, are you going to help out? Oh, for sure. Nice. So, three from me, one from Soki? Yep, three from you, one from Soki. This is a... This is a five. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. I can still nice. Focus. One I more time. I can still do it. Yes! Oh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but it was five Let's successes. Go. I think what Soki's doing to help is, like, pulling up the song and making it, like, visible to be able to uh, see it, to make it easier to match the, the frequency or... Uh, put it off so he's just that like a DJ set on and he's over there and he's got like a, a screen up and just like pointing at it just like ah, ah. <laughs> oh, which song is it yeah which song are you using to offset the scratch or what was it something about secrets is what um the song is something about secrets the um the fact that cash put something like in be uh, behind it we don't know if um pollux and caster know about that but since they've been henching for um cash probably knew the whole time Which song is Osiria howling? I didn't know there was going to be a song tied to it, but, uh... Is it, is it just, like, just straight... Yeah, it can absolutely just be... Um, just a sound, just a howl. Yeah, it's just, like, a very, like... Like, I imagine it as just, like, a very victorious, like... Like, her, you know, like... We did the thing kind of howl that she tends to do. For sure. Victory screech. <laughs> <laughs> out the window, the fire at the greenhouse is put out. And like the greenhouse just starts rebuilding itself. Peanut's perm comes back. And like Peanut sits up. He's just like, I knew it. I knew what Syria must have been under somebody's control. And he just like starts connecting dots. Like he's really quickly grabbing string and putting them one from the other. Like Iskra and Akana come into the um the room. One second, let me do that. Both Iskra and Akana come in and he just looks at them and he's just like, you two. And it's just like, excellent. I'm glad that you're here. And he's just like, uh. And he just shakes his head and you guys see a, a worm, this little yellow 
gross worm fall out of his ear and land on the floor. And like without even thinking about it, um, Akana just walks past it and crushes it like a cigarette under her um foot. And it's just like I don't know what's been coming over me the last couple of days, and I don't know why I didn't see it. But obviously it's like something nightmarish is involved. I feel like somebody is infecting our minds. And it's just like... This is the actions of the big bad wolf. Are you... And he's just like... He regales them with the conversation about the fact that once Osiria was cursed. And he has a... working. His working theory is the fact that with the moon's, min, um, moon's nightmare magic that uh, influencing the echo that Osiria is not herself and therefore has never betrayed the crew and if Osiria is not herself who else isn't themselves and it's just like everybody's pointing to Cash being the boogeyman and while that maybe may look like Cash that is no Catman that he knows it's like he's putting together a group to send to evil right now to deal with that problem. Arthur and Vidra will lead that cause. And we will save Cash from themselves. I think Soki's just standing behind the chair, just like nodding, just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What I tell you. <laughs> That's my peanut. Oh see a tattoo on the back of my hand of right. The Harbinger is just, like, nodding along. I think the Harbinger is actually humming Starborn Melody. Ah, nice. That's a good one. That's a good song. Oh, Syria, can you... Actually, Big Bad Wolf, can you roll me a resistance roll? This one's even harder. Eight. All right. The optimism has not broken you. How do you fight against it? I think... Whereas... Like... Osiria has to rely on, like, wits and, like, creative thinking to fight against the wolf. The wolf is just, like... Magically speaking, just straight up stronger than her, so it is just brute forcing its way into, like, getting back into control here, or at least trying. Like, I don't know if it succeeds fully with only those two, but... It is definitely getting harder. To keep, like, to keep your form, to keep the big bad wolf, not in check, to keep, it is harder for um, the big bad wolf to keep Osiria in check. Yeah. Like, I think it definitely knows it's getting weaker, but it's still just, like, trying to fight her as best it can. Oh yeah, cornered beast and whatnot. I'm not exactly. even sure if it's the, the Big Bad Wolf getting weaker, if it's just Osiria getting stronger. Could be that, too. Pina, Akana, and Iskra have walked out, uh, walk out of the office in, like, full mood. They're just like, they are about to retake the world. Like, they feel... Like, it feels impressive, obviously. And, like, um, Soki, like you were saying, Peanut having this shit on lock situation. Just gonna reach over and take that resonation paper and crumple it up into a ball and shoot it into the wastebasket. <laughs> Adorable. He won't be needing that anymore. Alright, 
what's the next step, you guys? Like, where are we going? I think Dendroid. All right. Yeah, I'm all right with doing that one next. So he once again just pulls out the die. He's like, all right. How you, how you feeling in there? Just like looking at Osiria. I... I think there may be hope to fully stop this yet. I will be honest. I think Soki's trying to talk to the big bad wolf as he says. You know, it'd be a lot easier if you guys just work together, you know? I feel like the wolf really, really wants to growl at him, but... That's a shame. It's not in control right now. It can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me an influence channel I uh, challenge level three because Soki's just really good at traveling in through dreams. Turns out. Yeah. Full successes. Absolutely. Nice. Dendroid. I think uh I think this time. It's just like he's gonna like act shock, he's gonna like point Osiria to look away. He's like, what's that? And then when Osiria looks back, we're just here. <laughs> and he's just like laughing to himself a little bit. <laughs> Sitting at the in the workshop of Dendroid, you hear outside the clangs of mechanical um of machines like they they've built a factory out there that is just pumping out robots out the window you can see mo like an army of squirrels preparing for war like giant mechs outside and they are like they are loaded to the teeth instead of just like the sport mechs that they were doing that they had, like, for boxing and little fighting, you see rail guns and Gatling guns and missile launchers built by the squirrels. And these machines are built for death. And you see the squirrel here, Flint, hat, uh, on his walls are maps leading to the silver thimble and like best like dossiers on all of the crew of how best to deal with them an order sheet for an incredible amount of null bullets from dactyloy and he's just like head, head in hand just, how did it come to this we just wanted to show off our mechs, and then that that monster Tarkus killed my friends blatantly, violently, like they weren't even people. But we'll show them. We'll drop this right in the middle of their city and we'll wipe them off the Echo once and for all. I think he, ha uh, he has a like top secret dossier in front of him. But he cannot see you unless until you want him to. I think Osiris is going to look to Soki for the plan on this one. I think Soki's just going to kind of like look back to Osirian. So. I think this started as Soki, uh, or not Soki, as Tarkus, uh, you know, fighting to save you. They wanted to show off their 
robots taking down the big bad wolf, the menace of of the Echo. Arcus just couldn't let that happen. And he's gonna just kind of like look look to her and just like I don't I don't know how to solve this one. I am afraid neither do I. This one's a bit tricky. I think so. He's gonna look to the harbinger. Like any crazy ideas? Hmm. It's just like, what would be a crazy idea that the Harby would have? Well, it's like I have one, but I just don't know if it's a, a good idea. I'm gonna look for something else first. It's like. The craziest idea is, what if his friends didn't die? You stopped your friends from dying. I mean... Yeah, I mean, if I could find their... Their ghosts... In theory, I could bring them back, but... Yeah, it's, it's worth a shot. GM to player. This is going to be a crazy role. I think if you want to like return them to life, it's probably a, at least an eight. Yeah. Let's say my other idea is threaten them. <laughs> uh, almost like uh, it, it would have two functions. Uh, Soki would transform, take on uh. The, the guardian form and just like tell them that the, the thimble's under his protection and if they go after it uh, it will uh, be a problem for them but also like showcasing to Osiria like hey no you can control that thing you just gotta learn how Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I'm down. To, I'm down for you to give the chance. Just so you know, if you if you mess that one up, like in the dream, they will be attacking um the silver thimble for tomorrow's game. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I just like I don't exactly know how to um stop the war per se. So if bringing the guys back could work. So he's definitely done that before. Um, can I try one if it fails? Do the other. We'll yeah, we'll we'll see. How like let's see. Yeah. So try to bring him back first. Um, which would be, I don't know, go to the place where they died and then try to bring him back. Oh yeah, for sure. We can do that. You see Tarkus standing off I mean squaring off against three of Dendroids like Max. Dendroids Max are very modular. And I didn't realize he'd um the reason that he hadn't um just disabled them was because I made them so like interchangeable. Like their mm -hmm. limbs are supposed to be swap outable. So he just went for the fucking people inside. Yep. 
That's why I went so brutal instead of just disabling him. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you see him like and as the last one, he brings his axe down on them and just cleaves straight through it. Yeah, yeah, he was he was henching, but like he said in the chat that he would have gone just like take a limb off if I hadn't like gone if I hadn't made them the way that they were. Oops. And you see him, just like um, you see a brutal moment of him bringing his axe straight down through the last one, cleaving them in half. Um, say, so he's just gonna wince and listen, like, ooh, yeah, Aff- like effective okay. killing machine. Uh, yeah, I feel like Osiris definitely isn't gonna watch that. <laughs> oh, roll me a resistance, just a five, to look away. All right. Oh, one. You barely like you look you look away, but you can still hear the screams. You know, mitigate the mitigate the horror of it, I guess. Yeah, I still need to roll too, right? Yep, roll as well. Same. Yeah. <laughs> look, you guys close your eyes, look away, try to pretend that it's not happening, but it's definitely Tarkas bringing down... Like, it, actually, it's the, all three of them. You see exactly how he kills each one of them, and it is visceral. It is violent. When you open your eyes as he flies away to go help deal with the monstrous Big Bad... The Big Bad Wolf's in the other room, by the way, just like a little, far, like a little ways away, currently getting wrapped up and used BDSM gear. Yeah. You want to change that? I would like to, actually. <laughs> Just go and beat the shit out of blueberries? Yeah. That, that would make me very happy. Like, yeah. I as a player wasn't huge on that. That would make me very happy. Yeah. <laughs> I I do just keep thinking of it as, like, um, wrapping you up and, like, uh... Just using whatever they had handy to tie you up in, not actually making you wear it, you know what I mean? Yeah. But still, go like if you want to change it for sure. <laughs> Soki stays here, trying to bring them back. Osiris just like, I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> I will leave you to it. I have other matters to attend to. <laughs> Probably distant sounds of wolf violence. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, for sure. Um, roll me an influence. Uh, actually, both of you, but first, Stoceria. All right. Let me just check my sheet. Remember. Oof. Okay, that time. Uh, this is gonna be like this was. Oh, that's that is not. Be, that is okay. So you can, ex- you can explode that ten. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Give us another one. But that's a 13, by the way. Yeah. In case anybody is, like, wondering. And... It's like... Oh, Siri, what do you... Like, you come down on blueberries. Like, with a rage. Like, the um, Big Bad Wolf does take control again. And he just starts tear... Like, starts tearing apart... The um, the mech that blueberries is in. Tarkus shows up and begins firing at you, but like the big bad wolf ignores that, ignores any de- like thing that Tarkus is doing. It's just like whatever. Like his shots are meaningless to you, as you rip into the big bad wolf. Malone attempting to like hold you back, but the other big bad wolf. Is currently fighting Maloney and where is it? Uh, Maloney and uh, the Silver Stallion. I forgot <laughs> it was Royce in this game. No wonder that game like turned so wild. 
the harbinger is like looking down at Soki. She's like, this got out of hand fast. Uh, I'd say so. Oh, so, Osiria, you rip the chest plate off of Blueberry's mech, which is legally distinct from Death Scythe. Mm-hmm. You see Blueberry's in there, dressed for his family portrait. Like, looking up at the big bad wolf in terror. The big bad wolf wants to eat blueberries right here, right now. What does Osiria want to do? I think. As easy as it would be to let the wolf win in this moment. She doesn't. Yeah, I think you got Soki calling it's... out to you. Just be like, remember, it's about control. Well, that's one of the reasons. But the other reason is she'd rather he live with that terror and know to never do that again than to just kill him and have it be over with right now. So she's okay. just going to terrify him and then leave. <laughs> Osiria incepting fucking blueberries. Y give me a resist. I think this is a challenge seven, by the way, Osiria. Like, the big bad wolf wants to eat blueberries. Yeah, okay. Fuck it. Yeah, I, I explore those two tests. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> Three successes already. Let's get some more. Just a couple more as a treat. Uh, oh well. The explosions never have been working out for us, but three is just like absolutely. Blueberry's just like wets his pants. No, I wouldn't do that to him. Like, um, blue but blueberries is terrified, and I think he understands consent. Yeah. Poor, poor used. Like that's all Osiria wants him to take away from this is to not do that again. All right, Soki, you're back at the other bodies. You like uh, you see the mech splayed out in front of you, like all three of these squirrels, dismembered, hurt, like all three of them dead. Are you changing it so that they lived through it? Or are you actually like trying to like revive them from the dead? Like, I don't think there's a way that would make sense to be like, oh, no, they're fine. I, I think it, I think in this one, there is a way to say that. It's just like, they're going to be scarred. But it would say that he didn't go that far. He did have some of his own restraint to it, is what I think it would be. Okay. Yeah, you, I, I would prefer that. Um, uh... It's going to be a resist. I think it's a resist six. Not a resist. Influence. Influence six. Okay. Seven, 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 five. Triple seven, baby. Like, you see one of the squirrels, like, get out, like, start to climb out of his machine. He's just like, oh. And this is, it's going to be ten. And he's just like, looks around. He's like, oh. I thought he had me. The silver thimble's got a lot better mechs than we thought. Somebody's really upset outside. Oh, and then another one of them, like, climbs out of the cockpit. And this is steel, and he's just like, whoo! You know what? I don't think we're ready to take on them yet. It's just like, he was terrifying. And the third one, like, climbs out, and he's just like, whoo! It's like, good thing he showed restraint. I can't believe he cut right through this mech without hitting me. Those guys must be really good. I think Soki's just gonna like pop up behind them just for just for like a second. And be like, you guys not remember what we did to you at the the robot robot Olympics? 
we built such better mechs since the Robot Olympics. Look at the size of the gun we put on that one, which is now in like four pieces. Yeah, it's just like, did you know we had the same amount of time, right? Uh, well, you guys were working on them at the same time we were working on them? I mean, we've got a whole a whole division for it, you know, fish tanger. It's like, all right, well, we'll call in the trucks and get these back to Dendroid. You guys got that big bad wolf handled, though? As it's like, oh, series, like, are you walking back off into the woods? Like, mm -hmm. after scaring blueberries? Yeah. I think in this version, that's probably how she is, like, the other version of her escaped, is that distraction was enough for her to get away as well. Absolutely. Alright. This is a resist nine for the big bad wolf. It wanted nothing more than to consume blueberries, but all you did was scared him. All right. Oh, one six. One. Yeah, you got He's one. Barely hanging on. <laughs> Give me one more. Yeah, I was gonna say. Oof! Two successes. Take your loot. Oh, your lucid should have dropped one more from the like being able to resist at Peanut's office. So you should be down to two resist after this one, and um, two um, lucidity. Lucid. Yeah, yeah, two lucidity. Like it's it's fighting. That is the story the dice are telling us for sure. All right, Soki, you've got one more chance to pull Osiria out of this. It's like we still got Chester's Nightmare, right? Yep. Yep. Just poor Chester, who is just having a time lately, by the way. I don't think you're going to fail the travel checks, but just to see. Just for the sake of, you know, adventure. Yeah. 14. Oh, so close. So <laughs> if you rolled a 13 right there, I would have died. <laughs> Ooh, it was right there. Oh, right on tip of my tongue. <laughs> Harvey's just like, you guys get violent sometimes. It's just like, it's, it's nice of you to make Tarkus so he wasn't a murderer. Yeah, well, nightmares are bad enough, I think. You guys arrive in Chester's office and he has campaign posters all over his walls. And he's just like writing fervently on his paper outside this place. You hear people chanting for abomination. And he's just like, no, 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 I can't, I can't be losing like first kissable. And now there's like, there's a, a new king. It's like I knew, how could he have found my grandfather's sword? That's ridiculous. I'm not saying Leo's a bad guy or anything, but Yoke is, like, he wasn't, he's not from here. It's just like, he's not from here. Like, this is my city, and I'm going to lose it to just, to the upstart that showed up and just saved the day. I could have saved the day, but it was dangerous out there. I was protecting people in the guild hall. Nobody is, nobody paying any attention to the fact that I was protecting people. Like, no, because he was out there with that moth, that fucking moth. Like, somehow this is my fault? I should lose my city? Just, 
And he's just like trying and trying and tr like filling out like multiple forms. He's like, how do I, how do I make them love me? I might have a fun idea here. Yeah, Soki's just gonna like look through his hair and be like, oof, that's a rough one. <laughs> Our goal here is to get Chester back in, like, the position of, like, leader of the city, right? Yep, because his nightmare is to lose the respect of all of his people. So. Like. Here's my thought process. I don't know if I could get him to cooperate to like make this happen but in the fabula game like that team was praised for like defeating the wolf and like killing the proxies right yeah yeah i want like i'm imagining how good it would look for chester if he came out not having killed the wolf but have i mean like you know, since folk song is all about, like, just playing the part and not actually, you know, killing each other, like, bringing the wolf back into line with how the rest of folk song works. Like, having... Like, we know the reality that it's mostly been Soki and Osiris doing Taming the Wolf here, but if she could just play the part for a minute to make it look like Chester did it, like... To like make you... you you go out there in wolf form, we send Chester out to tame the beast, and then you transform back. Yeah, exactly. Just, like, put on a show for the people to make Chester look like the big hero. Absolutely, because that, that doesn't take anything away from the players, because the players are still also heroes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, for sure. Uh, like, how do you lure, like, he is in, like, it, at that moment, he was in the guild house protecting people. Like, he was fighting back things as well. Like, this is the guild hall. We just, we never even got to go there in that game. Leo just sent people there. I was like, oh man, they're definitely going to go there and protect people. And then they didn't. So, what's it look like to rewrite history that the Big Bad Wolf attacked the guild house? I think... Like, while the, like, proxy fight is going on somewhere else in the town, Osiria is going to make, like, a big scene of, well, she's the big bad wolf. She's going to huff and puff and blow the doors to this guild hall down and just, like, barrel her way inside. And if Chester tries to, you know, fight back and protect people, she's not actually looking to kill him. She's looking to, like, Basically, show fight him with the intent of losing. Oh, th yeah, that's a resistance for, like, to stop the big bad wolf from coming out for sure. Oh, most definitely. Uh, this is going to be a resistance seven, I think. Soki, are you helping? Is this resistance uh, Osiria trying to keep the big bad wolf under control then? Yep, yep, it's yeah. resistance. Um, I think I'm... <laughs> I think Soki is just it's like, mm, mm. you know what Chester needs? A little makeover. And I want to make him just like knight in shining armor heading out to fight the uh, big bad wolf. Oh, Heck absolutely. Yeah. Or whatever is... Uh, Storybook accurate, whatever fights the big bad wolf. I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, the, the woodsman, 
Yeah. Yeah. It's like, he's got to play the part. So we got to make him dress like he's looking the part. Absolutely. A oh, Wolmian influence. Uh, that That's only a, a five. Two sixes. He, he comes out with a flannel on and a, um... <laughs> oh, Syria, you blow the doors off the place. And you got inside, you just hear Chester yell, Everyone get behind me! And he comes flying out the door with an axe in his hand. And he's just like, A vast, vile beast! I'll have you this day! And yeah, like, she's really playing into it. Like, she's doing all the, like, snarling and growling, baring her fangs, and... Then she does the attack that, like, it's intentionally missing him, but she's not gonna let the people know that. His axe bites into your snoot. It's like, and that's where the big bad wolf, you need to roll a resistance for the big, and to stop the big bad wolf from coming out and eating Chester. Gotcha. Hey. The, the eight in, like, is good enough, but then the ten does it too. Can you roll me one more ten cider? Uh, well. The big bad wolf tries to do a little like you can feel your head jerking to the side to like bite him, but then you're able to like keep yourself under control. In fact, I think the wolf is unintentionally helping because that really plays into how real the fight looks. Do you run away or do you fall down defeated? I think she's going to, like, fall down and basically surrender. You know, in the very folk song, like, she's been bested and she admits defeat kind of way. And Chester, like, comes up to you and he stares down and he looks down. And for a moment, Chester's completely lucid. And he's just like, he looks up and he sees Soki. He's like, Soki? <laughs> I just kind of look back down at him and say, adventure. I, adventure. He's just like, he catches on, he plays along. He's just like, I've defeated the big bad wolf. And as such, I shall take her prisoner. <laughs> it's just like, crowd cheers you guys see leo and um like you see leo talali um and erwin in the aud audience or in the crowd cheering along you also see a giant moth flying away and of course frog Psst. she's like how do i how do we do this guys what's going on Chester talking out of the side of his kid, very kissable lips. Uh, I think Osiris is gonna like subtly motion him to get inside the building and get them somewhere like out of sight of all these people so she can shift back. And I'll like jump down in front of the doors and try to distract the people and just be like, All right, everyone, it's time for a parade. <laughs> Perfect. Ooh, monsters vanquished. On this day, we must prepare the finest of feasts. Like, rock is cheering. Everybody just, like, loving it. Currently trying to, like... I didn't know all of the maps we were going to go to today, so, I like, I didn't know exactly what we were going to do, so I didn't have them completely ready, but here we go. Uh, 
<laughs> the parade starts outside, Frog leading the parade. <laughs> Beautiful. And Chester just like comes in here, like like grabs the doors and puts them back up. And looks around looks at you guys. He's just like Alright. I've had this dream before, but last time I was in my underwear. What's going on? Well. Uh. Nightmares. Everywhere. Uh. The, the magic, it's all. There's too much of it. It's affecting everyone. And it's not going away like the moon said that it was going to. Something wrong here. Hmm. Extra magic, huh? Just like we... Does sound like a problem. And have we... And she's like, what do you know about the weir? Uh, not much. As far as uh, me, the player, is aware. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't, as a player, know anything to give here, so I guess... There's roots that go all over the Echo, and they uh, have something to do with magic. They absorb the corruption, uh, but also gave the corruption a pathway to get all over the Echo. That was a problem, but we dealt with that problem. What do you know about the weird Chester? When you wake up, when there's no one listening, and he's like he looks at the harbinger, but like his eyes like don't actually focus on the harbinger. Like, and he's like, find me, and like he reaches his hand out to um to shake Soki's hand, and then also to shake Osiris' hand. Thank you from save. Thank you for saving me from that dream. And when Leo wakes wakes up, apologize to him. Let him know there's no ill will. I just thought he was trying to steal my city. Ugh. Of course. And speaking of apologies, uh, I am terribly sorry for the damage I caused outside. I had to make sure things looked convincing. No, no, absolutely. It was more than enough to shake me free. It's like, I appreciate you and the silver thimble. And he like, he had, he suddenly has a drink in his hand and, uh, and both of you two have drinks in your hand. He's like a toast to the silver thimble and to lock stitch. May your adventures never end. Here, here! Just clink, clink, uh, clink the glasses with them. Yep, and Osiria will join in. <laughs> Alright, Osiria, this is a 10 difficulty resistance for the big bad wolf to be pushed into submission. There it is. The big bad <laughs> nice. wolf finally lost. He put up one hell of a fight. Osiria, you feel yourself starting to wake up in that cabin. Soki, you feel yourself starting to wake up in your tower. And Chester's like looking back and forth as you two are like, you're doing the back to the future fade out thing. Yeah, I was going to ask if that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and Chester's just like, oh, looks like we're waking up. Find me. 
when you wake up. Visit me in Yoke. If I don't remember... Shit, what, what would you tell him? He's just like... No, he'll remember. He'll remember. Okay. Okay. He looks at Soki, points his finger at Soki. He's like, Tomb Squad! <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. And, like, I, I imagine as Soki's fading out, the theme just starts playing. Oh, absolutely. Was... <laughs> this theme's like Tomb Squad. Just let's go. And... and, yeah, before you two become like awake in your final moments of lucid dreaming oh. you two are being like split and split into two different parts. You're definitely being pulled, like, you're not that far away in-game, but, you know, you are far enough that it... That you guys won't be, like, waking up next to each other or anything. What are... What is the last moments of you two before you wake up? I think Sogi's gonna try to go for a hug. Um, just like as as that's happening, it just kind of just just says, "Stay safe out there, my friend. It's uh, it's up to you now." Thank you. And you. Stay safe as well, all right? I'll think about it. Harbin, you're just like, group hug! Opens its <laughs> wings and, like, take, like takes you both under them. It's so beautiful. <laughs> and then, yeah, you guys wake up in your beds. Soki in his, like, tower princess bed. Osiria in just, like... <laughs> like in a pile of leaves in the woods. <laughs> Which, honestly, is probably ideal for her. Let's be honest. <laughs> and yeah, the howling that Osiria did at um, Lockstitch like, cuts through the nightmares a bit for everybody. And even... In the nightmare, you do feel that you can fight back. You all feel like, yeah, this is scary. This is bad. But we're lockstitch. And with that, I think this episode ends. I only thought it was going to be about an hour and a half, hour to an hour and a half, and it went much longer. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I had a lot of ideas. All right. Oh, no, that all great. All great. Absolutely. Administrator Whiplaw. Fucking Peanuts finally like, yeah. All right. Everybody. So you two fucking killed it. Thank you so much for playing that. And it's like, as like a thing of just me DMing two people, fucking that went really well. Like, and like also let me play this game that I've apparently owned forever and um never touched. It's buying fun. bundles, buying bundles on itch is kind of wild sometimes. Yeah, this was a really neat system. I gotta be honest, I I really liked it. Like I said, it's, it felt really simple, but like it um went really good. Um. We are going to, I don't mean to like hurry us, but we're going to dip for about a half an hour so that we can like maybe eat it, maybe eat a snack before the next game. We do play another game at seven. Everybody, we're playing Tiny Gunslingers. Um, 
But yeah, potentially, like, definitely more dream games with this game for sure. Like, it, it just, it's about dreams. Um, so yeah, thank you guys, you two, so much for playing. Absolutely loved it. Great job, great energy. You guys really captured what I wanted out of this one. And, like, the dice told a story right, right up until the end. Sure did. Sure did. Alright, so thank you guys, everybody, about the run credits. Goodbye! Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye! Bye.